He's written a number of books. He has a, a few available here. If you, if you haven't bought, already bought them, you can you can purchase them while you're here and get them. And I suspect you'll even autograph them. Um, the, for a fee, yes. <laughs> the, Bob, as I mentioned before, is our local host and uh, really kind of a special opportunity to come to Windsor. Uh, so we really felt as we were developing the program, it would be quite appropriate if Bob just kind of gave us a little more history of uh, hockey in Windsor. So, Bob. All right. Well, one thing you learn about the history of hockey in Windsor once you move here, like me, like most people who live in Windsor weren't born here, uh, it was a very transient and late arriving existence, mainly because of the weather. In the early years, there was no. Uh, in the early years, there was no indoor arena in Windsor, and the weather here, parts of they call this the Sun Parlor of Canada because it's parts of Essex County and Windsor are on parallel latitudes with California, so we don't get a lot of snow, we don't get a lot of ice. I remember talking to Ken Danico, who was born in Windsor and played in the NHL. He said he had his first backyard rink in Windsor. I said, really? He said, yeah, it didn't last long. <laughs> so that kind of Windsor's hockey was outdoor rinks. And this was kind of Windsor's first hockey hero. This is Ernie Lifferden, who won a Stanley Cup with the Montreal Wanderers in 1907-08. But Ernie's full-time job was with the Canada Bridge Company. And he was a, one of the people assigned to come to Windsor to construct the Ambassador Bridge, which, you know, is right over here. And he ended up staying in Windsor. And there was a league then called the Detroit Hockey League, basically a senior league that played all their games on outdoor arenas in Windsor and Detroit. He joined the team and played for the Border City Stars out of Windsor. It was obviously as a guy who was basically what would have been an NHL caliber player, even though he was 40 at the time, was the most dominant player in the league. But sadly, the Detroit Hockey League history is very limited because they were at the whims of Mother Nature, and many of their seasons were abruptly halted by an early spring, and the ice would melt because they had nowhere indoors to play. So many years, they never finished their season. That all changed in 1925 when Windsor Arena was constructed and the city finally had a home for hockey. The Windsor Hornets played their the first season the senior team and the next year they joined the fledgling Can Pro League and still kept the name Hornets. The first game in the history of the Can Pro League was played in this rink. The first game in the history of the International Hockey League in the 40s was played in this rink. As I'm sure you all know, it was the first home for the Detroit Cougars who are now the Red Wings because there was no indoor arena yet in Detroit at the Olympia opened in 1927. In that one NHL season, at Detroit becoming the only North American sports franchise to play its entire home season in a foreign country. <laughs> one of the more famous games that season was a February 15, 1927 game between the Toronto St. Patrick's and the Detroit Cougars, which Detroit won 5-1. to one. The next game they played, they were called the Toronto Maple Leafs. And later on, in 1929, Chicago Blackhawks set a record by being shut out eight times in a row. Still a record. What's not known is the record was broken at Windsor Arena. Chicago was evicted from their rink and started playing games in places like Fort Erie, Ontario. They played a few games at the Olympia. They played one game against the Montreal Maroons at Windsor Arena. And that night, Vic Ripley scored their first goal in nine games to end the, what still remains the longest shutout streak in NHL history. So that's for a rink that was only an NHL home for one year, there's a lot of NHL history at Windsor Arena. And as we mentioned here, they are the 1926-27 Detroit Cougars who played all their games in Windsor. And back in those days, there was a ferry boat you could take across, and many people from Detroit would board the ferry and come over to see the hockey game. Here we have Mike Neville, who's played in the NHL, but he also scored the first goal in a professional game at Windsor Arena when he played in the Can Pro League for Hamilton. And as we mentioned, the St. Pat's playing their last game. This is Corb Denene, who scored the last goal in the history of the Toronto St. Patrick's. But what's unique about that is he never played for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He had signed a contract with Saskatoon the year before. And that was the year when all the Western League players' contracts were sold by the Patricks to the NHL teams. 
But Saskatoon argued that their contracts were separate. They were signed with the team and not with the league, so the Patricks didn't own the rights to their, their players. They took Tor Toronto to court, and the day after he scored that goal, a judge ruled in the favor of Saskatoon, and Corb had to report to Saskatoon to play for their minor league team, so he never played for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And here's our friend Vic Ripley, who scored that goal for Chicago in the 1929 game. A Windsor's minor pro team became the Bulldogs a couple seasons in and played as the Bulldogs till 1936, first in the Can Pro League and then in the International League. They won a Can Pro title in 29 and a IL title in 1931 when their goalies, we'll get to that guy in a minute. They were the farm team for the Montreal Maroons, so several of the Maroons players that played for them in the 30s came through Windsor, including Baldy Northcott, who scored Montreal's Stanley Cup winning goal in 35. Baldy Northcott and Mike Rupp with the 2003 Devils are the only players who played Windsor that scored a Stanley Cup winning goal. Now this fellow started the 30-31 season as Windsor's goalie. It was his last season in pro hockey. Clint Benedict obviously is wearing his famous goalie mask. He was said to be working on a new version of his goalie mask that he thought would lengthen his career. Obviously, he broke his hand halfway through the season and never played again, so he never got to experiment with his supposed new mask. This fellow took over in goal, Normie Smith, who won two Stanley Cups with the Red Wings. Now, Normie Smith was acquired by the, Rain, the Red Wings, and it's a Windsor-related story because there was a goalie from Windsor, a prominent senior hockey goalie who won an Allen Cup named Charlie Tino. The Red Wings desperately tried to sign Charlie Tino, but he wouldn't turn pro. So they, saw, they traded to get Norman Smith. Now, in 1938, the Red Wings traded for Tiny Thompson. They traded Norman Smith to Boston. Well, Norman Smith said, I'm not going. I'm done with hockey. And quit. So the Red Wings, actually, sorry, they, he quit on a contract dispute. And then they eventually traded for Tiny Thompson. But in the time between, Norman, when he was holding out, was replaced in the Detroit net by Harvey Tino, Charlie's brother. So the Tino family began and ended Norman's career in Detroit. One of the more interesting characters who played for the Bulldogs was this fellow, Stan Brown, who also happened to be a dentist. He was player, coach, and team dentist for the Windsor Bulldogs. <laughs> and there was actually a game where he pulled Andy Bellner got hit in the mouth with a puck. And in between periods, in his hockey gear, he pulled Bellner's tooth. And Bellner went out and finished the game. So I'm sure that was a hockey first. I don't, think I don't think there's too many playing team dentists in the history of hockey. Yeah. Uh, because Windsor was so late in arriving to hockey, it took them a long time to get an NHL player, and this fellow was the first player from Windsor to play in the NHL. Eddie Ouellette played for the Blackhawks in the 1935-36 season. He was born in Ottawa, but he grew up in Windsor. And that was pretty common. If you look at a lot of the hockey players from the Windsor area, they weren't born in Windsor. Because of the manufacturing hub that Windsor was, it was a very transient area, and a lot of people moved down here for jobs, especially during the Depression. When Jobs are hard to find. So a lot of families don't begin, you know, a lot of hockey players from Windsor don't begin their life in Windsor, but end up coming here and playing hockey here. And that was, he was an example of that. This fellow is another example of that. This is Archie Stinchcombe, who was part of that famous British team in 1936 that beat Canada for the Olympic gold medal. Archie was born in England, and his family emigrated to Canada, and they settled in Windsor. But he was one of the players that Buddy Ahern recruited to come across the pond and play as a transplanted Canadian who had English roots. So he won a gold medal. And what makes that unique is he's the first person from Windsor ever to win an Olympic gold medal. So I don't think there's too many Canadian cities that can say their first Olympic gold medalist won it for another country. <laughs> now, the Spitfires have had two existence, the current team that plays in the OHL, but from 1946 to 53, they played in the OHA Junior A Series. This guy was probably, well, I don't know if he was their most famous player, it was Terry Sacha, 
he played all of four games for the Spitfires and then they turned him pro. That's how he was too good for junior. But the Spitfires that era had three Hall of Famers. They had him and Glenn Hall, so they had two Hall of Fame goalies. And they had Marcel Cronovo in defense. Now, if you happen to walk along the waterfront here, you'll see there's a bench down toward where Joe Louis Arena, right across from Joe Louis Arena, that looks across to Detroit. Marcel Cronovo told me he came to Windsor with Johnny and Larry Wilson, the brothers, all from Shawinigan, who we recruited when Windsor, Windsor eventually became a Red Wings farm team, a junior affiliate. And they all came to Windsor, and Marcel told me they would sit on that bench, look across at Detroit, and say, we're going to play there. And all three of them did. But what makes that even more unique and makes it kind of a historic hockey site is Johnny Wilson's ashes were spread around that bench. Now, Windsor started actually as an independent team. They were a last-minute addition to the league in 45-46. So they had all local players. And their first game happened to be against St. Mike's in the Memorial Cup team with Red Kelly. And Windsor got edged 15 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is still one of the most famous teams ever to come out of Windsor. And really, in the hockey lore of Windsor, are probably the most remembered team ever, the 1963 Allen Cup champion Bulldogs. Almost all these guys settled in Windsor and made their home here when they came here to play senior hockey. And some of them are still in the area. I tried to get a few of them to come today, but they're getting up there in years. And you know, it's just not cohesive to public speaking. But I can tell you from the time I've spent with them, these guys can tell stories. <laughs> Which year did they win the Allen Cup? 1963. Well, that's the year they won. Yeah. That team, that season at Windsor Arena, played with the Soviet national team that would win the world championships and beat them 9-2. Kirk and Lee won in 1940. <laughs> and their roster, Harry Watson was the coach, Hall of Fame player. I talked to Harry one time and he said the most fun he ever had in hockey, and this is the guy won multiple Stanley Cups, he said was coaching that team. They had Riel Chevrefil, who was an NHL All-Star, who played for them. Joe Kluke, who won several Stanley Cups with the Maple Leafs, played for them. Wayne Rutledge was their goalie, which means that both of the Los Angeles Kings first year goalies, Wayne Rutledge and Terry Sajak, played Windsor. Now, probably the funniest story they ever told me was uh, they were playing Sarnia, and uh, it was 5 3, and Sarnia pulled the goalie. They had a power play and they had a face off in Windsor's end, so they pulled the goalie. And puck got pulled back to the point, but Bendo rushed and beat the defenseman of the puck and chipped it past him. And now he and Chevrofil have a 2 0 break on the empty net. And Lou says, Chevy's calling over to him, Louie, pass Chevy the puck. Chevy never had a hat trick before. So Lou slides the puck over to Real. He just slides it toward the net. It's just about to go in, and Louie skates like a maniac and smacks it into the net for his fourth goal. In the net. <laughs> Chevy, Louie never had a four goal game before. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Bob, did that team, uh, after they won the cup, did they go to Russia? On a tour they toured team? Russia in the fall of 1963 and were actually there when Kennedy was assassinated. Oh, they told yeah. me the Russians told them that Kennedy had been assassinated and they thought they were messing with him. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. And they didn't find out. There was actually a reporter from the Windsor Star who went with them and when he called to file a story in the office, they confirmed, yeah, it's true. But they thought the Russians were just messing with them. They didn't believe it. There's a funny story about that too. They had a defenseman named Walt Polishin who was Ukrainian and fluent in Russian. Russian, sorry. He brought suitcase, basically brought every piece of clothing he owned to Russia. And Lou Bendis said, What are you going to do, Isaac? I'm going to sell it. And he would go every day around lunchtime to Red Square and set up and just sell clothes to people. <laughs> and so Bendos was curious and he went with him to watch him in action one day. And he said, I'm standing there and Walt says to me, Hey, Louis, give that guy your coat. He said, why, is he cold? He says, no, I just sold it to him. <laughs> 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 in 1975, the Spitfires were reborn, the current edition of the Spitfires, in the, what was then known as the Ontario Major Hockey League, now it's the OHL, of course. These are two of the more famous members of that team. Winter's kind of a, a cradle of coaches when it comes to hockey. In the 50s, one season, 
Don Cherry, John Muckler, and Al Arbor were all on the same Spitfires team. And these two guys were both captains of the Spitfires and in 2013 coached against each other in the Stanley Cup final because the, the color photo is Joel Quenville, the black and white photo is Claude Julie. And if you to look at today, Peter DeBoer, former Spitfire, coaching in the NHL. Ron Wilson was from Windsor, he coached in the NHL. Bob Boogner from Windsor. Joel Quenville, who I mentioned. And, you know, there's just so many guys from Windsor that have coached in the league. It's, it's mind-boggling, you know, Johnny Wilson was a coach. He played here. And he's, he can go on and on, Tommy Webster. You know, just so many guys. That, now, this team, similar to the uh, first edition of Spitfires, didn't get off to a great start. They played Oshawa in their first game and lost 10-1. to uh, the fortunes of the franchise took a big turn when this place opened in 2009. This is where the Spitfires currently play, the WFCU Center, and they've enjoyed tremendous success there. It started that season when they won the first Memorial Cup <coughs> ever in Windsor history. Now, Windsor had gone to, you want to talk about heartbreak, they'd gone to the 88 Memorial Cup, swept through the playoffs in the OHL unbeaten, Swept through the round robin unbeaten at the Memorial Cup, got to the final, lost 7 6 to Medicine Hat. The only playoff game they lost the whole spring was the Memorial Cup final. But this team, they did the opposite. They went to the Memorial Cup, lost their first two round robin games, and then rolled right through the title. They're, they're still the only team that's ever done that to lose their first two games and win the Memorial Cup in their round robin format. And the following year, they became the eighth team to win consecutive Memorial Cups. This time, the Memorial Cup was a breeze. They went through unbeaten, but in the Eastern Final in the OHL, they fell behind 3-0 to a Kitchener team that had Gabriel Landeskog and Jeff Skinner. And then came back to win four in a row after some idiot columnist from the Windsor Star wrote they'd never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Which I heard about a lot. <laughs> Actually, this is the sorry. This is the 2017 team, which won the most recent Windsor Memorial Cup when they hosted it in 2017. But that creates another interesting note about Windsor hockey history. The Spitfires won the Memorial Cup in 2017 and won a playoff series since 2011. The only reason they got in this was they were the host team. They still haven't. They've got seven years of winning a playoff series but they won the Memorial Cup. That just doesn't seem right. So there you have it. History of Windsor in half an hour or less. Thank you, Bob, for uh, the fascinating and great introduction, of course. Uh, uh, the Windsor Arena is still here. Uh, it is uh, just two or three blocks just south of Caesars. Uh, casino here, so you can wander around it. Is it open at all? It is not open. You'll be sad to know that it is now used to store road salt during the winter. <laughs> so the inside is pretty much gutted. But the exterior is still there. The murals that were painted with all the old time hockey players and other people that played prominent roles in the rink are there on the inside. So Where does the University of Windsor play? They play at South Windsor Arena, which is out of they used to play at the old They played a couple of years there, but they found the fans was too far to get students to go down. Now that they've got a downtown campus, it might be different, but back then they didn't. Actually, the building behind us, which is now part of the university, was for years that was the Windsor Star, and they sold it to the university. What about the college team that played games with McGillan? Yeah, the Lancers, that's what we're talking about. They okay. used to play at Windsor Arena, now they play at South Windsor. They're pretty successful. They've done okay. They've never won a championship. But they've well, they beat McGill a couple times. Yeah, but they, they've never gone on to win a CIS title. Actually, okay. this place here, St. Clair College in the 70s, was an Ontario College hockey power. They dominated the Ontario College League back then. And actually, sent a player, Del Hall, who played for the Seals, to the NHL. So they go from a community college league to the NHL is quite an accomplishment. You being a publisher, what, what's your version of the genesis of the misspelling of the word Leafs? The Leafs? Yeah. Is there any, any reason to be misspelling a word? I think it just sounds better than saying the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the leaves sounds like leaving. I think. Yeah.